Hello guys, this is my new ultra hardcore world and I will be attempting to survive 100 days in it. I have been playing Minecraft for more than a year now. I have always been really intrigued by the hardcore mode because if you die, you lose the entire world and so it gives an extra incentive to be careful and stay alive. Then I heard of ultra hardcore. It is basically hardcore but natural health generation is disabled. Where in hardcore you can heal by filling your food bar, in ultra hardcore you can only heal with a regeneration effect provided by golden apples and potions. My main goal for 100 days was to defeat the Ender Dragon, which was going to be insanely hard since I have never even played in this mode. I was excited to start this world after dying a horrible death in my previous hardcore world. I looked around and was glad to see I spawned at a place with trees. And I punched this tree with a stick instead of my hands because that would hurt. Made a wooden pickaxe and switched to stone tools as fast as I could. There are basically two ways to survive the upcoming night in hardcore. Make a starter base or find wool and make a bed. I did not want to build a base at spawn, so I made a boat and found an island with some sheep on it. I'm sorry sheep. My second goal was to get iron tools and armor as soon as possible, since any mob could basically kill me in this state, so I went down mining in Minecraft. I was really careful not to go too deep into caves, since mobs, especially creepers, like them dark spaces. I did manage to get some iron tools and a shield and mine some gold. And even though I was really careful, this sneaky skeleton still got a hit on me. This was really bad news since there was no way for me to heal unless I could find an apple to craft up a golden apple. When mining, I got attacked by this zombie. I barely survived with two hearts left but had absolutely no way to heal. On day 3, I hoped to get an apple from a tree I was able to grow underground. And luckily, that was the case. I was able to heal up to 4 hearts in total, which was still not an ideal situation. This is why I planted a second tree, hoping to get a second apple. During this time, I managed to get some iron, so from now on, I was way better protected. Sadly, the second tree wanted to see me die, so I did not get an apple on day 4. I decided it was time to get up to the surface and use the hoe to get apples. Who said hoes were useless, huh? Managed to heal myself up pretty good, so after a night's sleep, it was time to go exploring on day 5. My goal for today was to find a spot where I could build a starter base. So I hopped into my boat and not long after I found some ruins. I was really careful to not take fall damage or get attacked by a mob since that would mean my death. I found two identical treasure maps in my ruins, threw one off the cliff and used the other one to find my very first diamond. <coughs> I wanted to build my starter base somewhere on the coastline. During my trip I came across the badlands, not realizing there is a lot of gold to be found there. Then I finally found a beautiful generated cliff which I was going to call my home. I chopped away some trees and started building my house on day 7. I'm going to be honest here, this house I built on for 2 days was nothing special but it would provide a safe place for me to return every night. With the limited resources I had, I tried to build a fancy second floor the next day but did not have enough wood for it yet. Floor gang, floor gang. The next important thing I wanted to work on was a farm. A farm would give me a little bit of food every day without having to leave my house to hunt animals. Besides that, a wheat farm would enable me to breed cows, which I would need for an enchanting table. I started looking for some seeds and at the end of day 9 I planted my very first seed. The sunset was beautiful and I knew I had made the right decision to stay here. On day 10 I made water canals for my farm to make it grow faster and I thought it would be smart to make a quick staircase to my house. Fast as fuck, boy. I also gathered up some more wood so I could finish my second floor. Floor, game, floor. My need for sand made me jump off this cliff, only to find iron, which I could actually use really well. It was getting night though, and I was not going to risk getting killed by a drowned for some sand, so I returned home and slept in my bed. Give me sand. I decided that instead of jumping down a cliff, we were going to need a decent staircase going up all the way from the ocean to my house. A zombie wanted to check it out, but I didn't let him. I finally finished my second floor of my starter house and planted the sugarcane I had obtained on day one. That is such an interesting information, please leave that out of the video. No. It was day 12. By cutting down the trees on my property, I managed to get plenty of apples, but I lacked the gold to make golden apples. I crafted up some torches and mined down to the depths of the Minecraft earth to hopefully mine some gold. I was not going to spend the cold night in a cave, so I ran back to my cozy house. There's nothing like sleeping in your own bed. 
I melted up the golden iron I found, worked some more on my farm, and made a nice path around my house. And even though I was never going to use it, it looks nice I guess? I wanted to get full health so we could explore the world and find a village. But in order to safely do that, we were going to need some more gold. A silver fish spawned out of nowhere and tried to end the series, but my mighty sword put an end to his life. I found enough gold to craft up 3 golden apples, which was really, really nice. I was still mining on day 14 when I found more diamonds. With the diamonds I had found, I was able to make a pickaxe and I decided to get some obsidian. I was going to need obsidian to craft an enchanting table and eventually a nether portal. At this point though, the nether would be way too dangerous and would surely kill me. On day 15 I was once again swinging my diamond pickaxe from left to right. I managed to find some more gold which I used to heal me up completely. I mean, almost? And when I found some more diamonds, I decided I had been mining for long enough and I went back. Day 16 was wasted getting an apple, because the skeleton decided to lurk in the caves and shoot me. Luck was not on my side today, but I gathered up some wood and in the end, I did find an apple. Before exploring this world on day 18, I figured it would be smart to have a small storage system for all the items I would bring home. So I spent day 17 sorting out my items in chests, and besides, now I finally had a use for my second floor. floor. Yeah. I started day 18 in a peaceful way by expanding my wheat farm. It then was time to explore this wide and vast world. I headed to a swamp nearby and was really amazed and happy to see a village just a few hundred blocks away. Luckily, it was not an abandoned village and the villagers were still alive. They would be really useful in the future. For now though, I went through all the chests in the village and found a bunch of apples. I found out you can buy apples from farmer villagers, so I forced the villager to become a farmer, but sadly, I could not level him up. Even though I had found the village, I was not done exploring yet. I did not really find something interesting, but in the evening I came across the Badlands biome I had seen before. I remember the spawn rates for gold in the Badlands were a lot higher than in normal biomes, and since we could definitely use the gold for golden apples, I risked my life by going into one of the mineshafts. I encountered several creepers and skeletons along the way, but I remained careful and managed to get a lot of gold on day 20. Packed with almost a stack of gold ore, I left the mineshaft in the morning of day 21. When trying to find my way home, I found a chest with beetroot and melon seeds and a name tag. The seeds allowed me to farm different types of crops, and with the melons, I could probably get some emeralds by trading with my farmer villager. I couldn't quite make it home, so I slept in this beautiful place. On day 22, I tried to grab some lava, but a bucket turned out to be bugged. Eventually, I made my way back and realized that this place had become my home in just a few days' time. I spent the rest of the day working on my beautiful farm and melted up the freshly found gold ore. I then threw an egg onto the ground and it spawned a chicken, which I then named Kevin. On day 23 I tried to flex even harder with my starter house by putting a decent roof on it. At night I wanted to murder some slimes, so I could craft the lead. With the lead, I then could make a cow farm, which would provide me with enough leather for an enchanting table. At night I went over to the swamps, but got attacked by a drowned with trident, and I almost died. I had to use all my golden apples to heal up, so practically had no healing left. I was in a really bad spot on day 24, but I still had to get the slimes. Since slimes only spawn at night, I waited till it became dark again, and went back to the swamps once again. Luckily this time, I was able to kill a slime and return home safely. So now it was time to breed cows and then kill them for all their lead. I found two cows nearby and put them in a cage and made them do it. I figured I could as well do the same with sheep, so I lured them into their cage. I also expanded my house to make room for the enchanting table. Apparently a creeper decided that it was very animal unfriendly of me to put animals in a cage and he tried to murder me. I decided to put up some anti-creeper signs to stop them from coming near my house ever again. Too scared to go outside, I figured I could spend the rest of the day working on the inside of my house. Since the creeper made me use all my remaining golden apples, I had to return to the Badlands biome once again on day 27. The biggest difference between regular hardcore and ultra hardcore is that everything can be dangerous and fatal. And even when something does not kill you, it will leave you with very low HP. I mined in the Badlands caves for gold and almost got choked to death by some gravel. Anything can kill you in this mode. I thought that treasures would contain apples as well, and thus I spent the entire day searching for treasures. Fun fact, if you give a dolphin a raw fish, it will lead you to the nearest treasure chest. But sadly, I did not find a single apple on day 28. The next day I went through some more ruins, but I got surprised by this drowned defending his home. Since I did not want to pick a fight with Trident Boy, I decided to retreat. I will be back. I went back home and expanded the farm because I wanted to level up our farmer villager Billy. He had a 70% chance 
of selling us apples, which would make crafting up golden apples a lot easier. I started day 30 by harvesting sugarcane, which we would need to make bookshelf. Now I recently found out that you can make a regeneration stew, so while trying to find Oxide Daisy, I came across this wandering villager with only one llama. Sad gamer moment. I got the flowers, got this pumpkin, and went over to the dark oak forest where the mushrooms grow. The next day I made sure the mushrooms were going extinct very soon and I crafted up some regeneration stews. A skeleton surprised me and even though my reflectors were fast, they were not fast enough. This is the exact reason I hate the dark oak forest. But I was able to regen by eating the stew I crafted before. One downside to this way of healing is that you need to have a bit of hunger to be able to eat it. On day 32 I went back home and I found the last llama and tried to help him. But he likes to go for a swim. Farming time. So I decided it was time to upgrade our iron gear to diamonds and I went down to the mine in the evening. I mined for a long time, but I did not find a single diamond on day 33. I really do miss efficiency, it makes a huge difference when strip mining. What I did find however was a dungeon, my first dungeon I found in this world. We could turn this spawner into an XP grinder, still mining on day 34. I found 4 diamonds in total. That's enough for some fancy boots, I guess. On day 35, I was a little bit more lucky and I found 13 diamonds in total. At this point, I was mining for more than an hour and when I saw a cave spider spawner right in front of me on day 36, I just decided to get back home. When running home, I was surprised by these creepers, but luckily I was able to escape with just a scratch. On the morning of day 37, I came out of the mine, I shoved the gold in a blast furnace, which I stole from the villagers, please don't tell them. I saw that the cows had a hard time breathing and even though I like it that way, I expanded their cage. When breeding them, I fell into my own cage and was not able to escape, so I had to start killing the cows. I don't mind. The latter, I was able to craft up some books and bookshelves. I enchanted my pickaxe and sadly only got on breaking 3. Why game? Why? Some villagers thought it would be a great idea to roam around on my property and so I killed them in cold blood to assert dominance. I drank milk to cleanse me from their bad omen effect and gathered up the supplies to make an XP grinder on day 38. I spent the next day following a tutorial on how to make one because I simply had no clue myself. I finished the spider spawner the next day and went back mining for diamonds. There was no point in having a lot of XP if we did not have diamond gear to enchant. The Minecraft luck was on my side today and I found 24 diamonds in total. With these diamonds, I crafted up diamond armor. Looking shiny. I enchanted my shovel, hoping to get more lucky again, but again, only got on breaking 3. I made a second diamond pickaxe and this time got efficiency 4 and on breaking 3. <coughs> to enchant my diamond armor and be somewhat safe to go to the nether, I grinded XP for the entirety of day 41. It took me 20 minutes to get 6 levels and I was not satisfied with the speed of this farm, so I looked up a better design. For this however, we needed soul sand. And thus, on day 42, I set up a nether portal and went into the nether for the very first time. I was not happy to see I spawned in the basalt deltas since that's a really hard biome to travel through. I mined quartz and that's not important for the story. I decided to just mine in a straight line until I finally saw some light at the end of the tunnel. Carefully I built a bridge through the basalt deltas, but I ran out of cobblestone and went back to the overworld. Eventually, I spotted a nether fortress on day 43. I was really, really happy with this. This meant we did not have to travel far through the dangerous nether for some blaze rods. I took my time building my bridge and made sure it was completely safe and lava free. On day 44, I finally reached the edge of the basalt biome. I just really did not want to risk losing all my effort and time I put into this world, so I went back to prepare and come back stronger. Little disclaimer for the next few days, my recording program messed up and so we have this very pixelated footage. Day 45, I did some farming, cause that's what the cool kids do. Okay, maybe not. I crafted up reels and went to the village to abduct Billy in a minecart. We needed Billy for the apple tray to get golden apples easily. Day 46, for some reason I was so stupid and I forgot to craft the minecart, so I mined till I found iron. I then got Billy to my base through the swamps. This was so annoying to do. I finally got him home on day 47. I built a little place for Billy on day 48, <coughs> and yes, I uh... Spent an entire day on this, please don't, don't judge. It was day 49 and I did some farming and I made Billy trade apples. He officially is the hero of the series, said Kevin Noises. With the golden apples, I had enough confidence to mine the soul set. I had to fight off this magma cube army and apparently his friend also wanted a piece of me. When I went back through the portal, I ended up in a different place. So on day 51, I decided it was time to link up the nether portals for good. I'm a Minecraft pro, so obviously this worked on my first try. The rest of the day, I followed yet another tutorial to build the improved spider spawner. Wait, I'm a Minecraft pro. No. And you can probably guess what I'm doing here. Grinding for the juicy XP. And the quality is fixed from this point forward. Ooh, nice. It is day 54 and I had gathered up 
41 levels of XP. I went back to my house, crafted up a new sword because the current one was basically broken, and got on breaking 3 on my axe. Luckily my other enchantments were way better, and now we had fully enchanted diamond gear. I set up with knockback on my sword, which surprisingly is really useful for creepers and kind of annoying for skeletons. I mine cool. Just cool. But I did it to get to level 30 and get infinity and power 3 on my bow. This is going to be insanely good for the end dragon fight. Armed with a lot of cobblestone, I went to the nether fortress to get blaze rods and nether wards. Just testing out my new bow here. Goodbye wither skeleton. I searched for a spawner, killed a blaze and found what I was looking for. I farmed up the blaze rods and killed this enderman cause he started shaking when I looked at him. But on day 56 I realized I had not found a nether ward yet. I fought off this piglin and I went through the entire nether fortress. But there was not a single nether ward to be found. A skeleton almost hit me in the lava, I repaid him by breaking his bones. Get it? It's a... Uh, it's a skeleton. <clears throat> then, this happened. After a terrifying experience, I was not going to try my luck anymore. So the next day, I went to work on the basement. To make a staircase downstairs, I had to expand the house by one block. The next day, I spent digging out the basement with an unbreaking 3 shovel. Without efficiency. It took a while. I blame the enchanting table. I couldn't cope with the annoying villager sound, so I killed him like everyone should. We needed quite some wood for the chest, so I went chopping down some trees. When I returned, an enderman had intruded my house. He was dead a few seconds later. I feel like a good storage system is one of the most important things in Minecraft survival. If you cannot sort your items properly, you're going to lose a lot of valuable stuff. Learn from the Minecraft Pro here. <coughs> I tried so many different stair designs, but I could not make one I was happy with. I set up with this water elevator. I feel like it's a unique and simple solution, and most important, it's symmetrical. Although the top part is... Not really. On day 62, I wanted to make potions, but I suddenly realized we still had not gotten a nether ward. I hopped into my nether portal and first tried to go through the basalt deltas, but gave up quickly and dug a tunnel in the opposite direction, hoping to find another nether fortress or a bastion. After a day of digging, and eventually reaching the other side, there was no structure to be seen. I decided to bridge to the left and spend way too long mining in this delta where I was forced to retreat because of the lava. I was going to do everything in my power not to die, so I moved very slowly through this delta and eventually made my way to what looked to be a soul sand biome. I had disabled the fog option because it is a lot easier to find structures in the nether that way. It looked like it had paid off because I saw some black stone bricks a few hundred blocks away and I decided to bridge towards it. Day 64 and I found a fortune 1 golden pickaxe. While trying to get closer to the bastion, I got attacked by some skeletons. They are dead now. I ate a golden apple and continued my journey through the nether. After finally reaching the bastion, I had to find a room with the nether wars in it. But I promised myself to be insanely careful since I still had the fresh memory of my previous hardcore death. This is why it took me so long to get to the middle. And sadly, when I reached the middle, there were no nether words to be seen. I did, however, find pixab music in my first chest. We were vibing. I literally spent the entire next day fighting piglins and going through this bastion. But it did not look like nether wards had spawned there. So I just gave up and went back home. On the next day, I figured I could not give up on the nether wards. I needed the potions for the ender dragon fight and would not survive without them. I bridged over the lava towards the green warp biome and was hoping to see a nether fortress. Instead, I found an angry piglin, some gold and a bastion. There was no better alternative, so I went towards the bastion. The next day, I again took my time to make sure I was safe at all times and searched through the bastion for nether wards. However, the nether wards were nowhere to be found and I got a bit careless. Then suddenly I got attacked by a pickling army and while trying to escape I almost fell into the lava. Luckily I ran faster than all of those brainless mobs and was able to get away. Although the fact that I almost died on day 69 is pretty nice. I was actually really terrified of the bastions now and promised myself not to go into one ever again. As usual when I need to relax I did some farming and then decided it was time to make a super smelter. I was going to design one myself instead of copying someone else because I really do want to get better with redstone. And the best way to learn something is by just doing it. Do it! It took me till day 77 to make a working, efficient super smelter. Besides that, I went through all the items I had and organized all my chests, which also took a long time. So on day 77, this is the final product. 
and I really do like my basement now. And the best part about this super smelter is that the trap doors closed when you use it. Gotta love the small things in life. Thanks to the Twitch viewer who gave me the tip. Time was closing in and I wanted to defeat the Ender Dragon on day 100 and we still had a lot of things that needed to be done. First off, I wanted to get a stack of golden apples for the fight to ensure my survival while fighting the dragon. So once again, I went to the badlands and mined gold for the next day. No endermans in my cave. I tried out the strip mining technique and was able to bring home two stacks of gold on the evening of day 79. Sadly, this was only good for 16 golden apples. However, I finally got a chance to use my insane super smelter 4.0 ultra edition trap doors included and after I had repaired my pickaxe, the gold started rolling in. The next day I had second thoughts about my armor strength and wanted to make a double set of armor, enchant it and combine it with the armor I was currently wearing. I thought an easy way to get diamond gear would be to make an armorer villager. These villagers sell diamond armor for emeralds so I started planting melons and pumpkins for big stocks money. I went over to the village and locked the villager in his own house. Hey. That's relatable. He demanded coal and so we went back into the mines. I had to fight skeletons and zombies and at the end of day 81 we had to waste the golden apple and ended up with 44 coal. Our villager was not satisfied with that and I figured mining for diamonds manually would be even quicker than leveling him up. Since I was not in the mood for mining, I decided to hunt for the rarest item in this entire world, a nether ward. I went back to the nether and still ended up swinging my pickaxe from left to right. Or is it right to left? I even risked my life by bridging towards the lava without success. But after a long time, we saw it. A nether fortress. The dopamine was released into my brain and on day 83, we fought our way into the fortress, hoping to finally find nether wards. While exploring, these wither skeletons thought they could just end it all. I decided to show them who is boss in this world and while going through some chests, I found the item I had been looking for for so long. I went back to the blue warp biome to gather up ender pearls. Along the way, I also found some juicy, juicy gold. A lot of endermen spawn in this warp biome and so it would be pretty easy to gather up the ender pearls. We would need these to craft up eyes of ender to eventually locate the stronghold, open the gates of the end and defeat the ender dragon, which was the ultimate goal of these 100 days. Nothing to see here, just slaughtering endermen. I just built a simple to high platform where I could safely stay while keeping the endermen from hitting me. A lot of endermen and 14 enderpearls later, I went home and killed this ghost for his tears. Big man, please don't hit me off, I'm begging you. I did not have enough wards for all the potions I wanted to brew, so I made a small farm. I made them eyes of ender and had a peaceful night's sleep. After waking up fresh and full of energy, I wanted to mine the diamonds I needed to make a new and stronger set of gear. My luck, however, was not on my side today, but I guess gold will do as well. I didn't give up and eventually found some diamonds. On day 87, I defended my diamonds from greedy mobs and mined 17 of those juicy blue orbs. I thought that would be enough. I went up to the surface and rode back home in a boat. I set up the enchanting table once again, crafted up new gear and enchanted it. I got unbreaking on my chestplate, fortune 3 on my pickaxe, sharpness on my sword and to get protection 4 on my helmet I had to mine some quartz. It's one of the quickest way to get XP if you don't have an enderman farm. After combining my items and an anvil, I felt confident and good about my gear. On day 88 I made a pumpkin helmet for the endermans. They are so annoying. Got some sand to make glass bottles and so it was time to brew some potions. I made some instant healing and regeneration potions which we would definitely need for the fight. Then there was basically one thing left to do besides getting that right armor. Getting a lot of golden apples. So for 3 days straight I mined in the badlands biome risking my life for gold. On the morning of day 92 I managed to get quite some gold and we returned home. I melted the gold in my super smelter, I am still so proud of that thing, and I was able to craft up 40 golden apples. From this day on, I felt way safer and more confident. We now had healing for days. Uh, another disclaimer here, I know we only had 7 days left and this time could have been used very wisely, but instead I spent the next 4 days figuring out how to make an automatic item destroyer. Please don't judge me, and I am just going to blame the person that gave me a tutorial that did not work. We finally figured something out on day 96, and to be fair it was pretty nice to have an item destroyer in my base. Right? Guys? It was day 97. I checked my ender dragon barrel and realized there were two things left to do. One, get netherite armor and two, make potions of slow falling. I decided to mine for ancient debris first, so I crafted up some potions of fire resistance. A tip to everyone playing hardcore, the moment you have the ability to make potions, don't ever go into the nether without a fire resistant potion. It will save your life. Besides from that, my pickaxe would not survive when mining for 32 diamonds 
diamonds, ancient debris, so he went over to the village to get a mending trade. Me being my stupid self again, I forgot books and emeralds to trade with a villager, so I had to go all the way back again. I farmed some pumpkins and traded with Billy. When I finally locked up a new villager, which took a while, we went to work. Every time you place down an electron and break it, the trade of the villager refreshes. Yup, that's what we did for the next two days. Uh, I am just going to warn you here, this is probably the most anticlimactic day 100 you will ever see, because I finally got my mending trade on this day. Floor gang, floor gang, floor. I chucked it on my pickaxe, which costed me 5 levels, and then went to the nether to get them ancient debris. And that's it. We survived 100 days in ultra hardcore. We could not complete our main goal of defeating the ender dragon, and I can confident, and I can confidently, wow, and I can confident, and I- and I can confidently say this is because of the ultra hardcore aspect of this playthrough. Okay, also maybe because we made an item destroyer. The days we wasted by being overly careful and gathering up a lot of gold could have been used doing other stuff. I think if this were regular hardcore, we would have defeated the Ender Dragon around day 75. But even though we did not complete our goal, we were still alive after 100 days which is impressive by itself. It was a really cool challenge I set for myself, and even though making this video took me a while, I did enjoy it a lot. For me personally, this brings up the question what to do next. I could just continue with the normal episode, just like I did in season 2, but there is a part of me that just wants to keep playing till I survive 200 days in this world and then make another video like this one. If you have any ideas, let me know. And I can only say thank you for still being here. It's been an amazing journey, which I was able to experience with you all. And no matter what, I will defeat the Ender Dragon in Ultra Hardcore. Don't you worry about that. Have an amazing rest of the day and goodbye. Also, this script contains 6.5k words. That's also not really useful information, is it? But it's my video, so...